welcome. I'm Peg Larson. I'm with the ACE Center. I'm here with Teresa Schaaf, and we're going to visit with you about the workforce and about transferring. If, when you graduate from Western Wyoming Community College, you have a couple of options. Um, one is to go directly into the workforce. Our certificate programs and Associate of Applied Science programs will lead you to that path. The other option is to transfer to a four-year institution. That would include our Associate of Arts, Associate, Associate of Arts, and Associate of Science degree. Um, when you, there are quite a few different degrees in education. The professional certificates we offer here at Western. Um, we also are offer the Associate of Associate degrees, which include the Associate of Arts. Associate of Science, Associate of Nursing, and Associate of Applied Science. The first three are considered transfer degrees, and then the Associate of Applied Science degree um, is considered a terminal degree. That means that once you complete, you can go out into the workforce. But the great news is we now have a Bachelor's of Applied Science, so if you do pursue um, an Associate of Applied Science degree here at Western, like our industry, some of our business programs are associate of applied science. You can transfer and um, get the business portion of a four-year degree to um, really complement your associate of applied science program. If you do not know where you're going to transfer, there are a lot of great resources out um, online. One of the ones I use all the time is. Um, www.petersons.com. You can go ahead and click and research a lot of different options for transferring. So right here, if you were planning on going into the psychology area and pursuing a degree in that, that program, you could type psychology and it would take you out here, and these are all the schools that offer that program. You can click four-year on campus or online. A lot of our students here at Western are online students. They plan on remaining in our communities and then completing their four-year degree online. So if we click it here, we will see the online options for the psych psychology program. What I do recommend when you're out here is once you find a few of those um, institutions you want to research, be sure to go to their homepage. It's a little bit easier to navigate once you get to the homepage of the institution. So I consider anyone that transfers a transfer champion. Transferring is um, it's an art. So when you apply to come to Western, you had certain steps you had to do. When you transfer, you do those same steps. You want to make sure you don't just think, oh, I've completed my two-year degree here at Western. I'm transferring. Everything's going to be the same, because it is not the same. When you transfer to a four-year institution, you're going to want to connect with people. You're going to want to research what their requirements are. And you want to start that immediately. Really. The best time to start it is when you're in high school and you figure out which program you want to go. So when you go to come to Western, we can immediately help you with the transfer process and check out different programs at four-year institutions. If you're a non-traditional student, um, start immediately that your first semester here on campus. Um, if you have not started and you, if you're not started and you're graduating this semester, please give me a call at the ACES Center as soon as possible and schedule an appointment so I can help you with that process. All right, some tips for transfer to, transferring. The first one is learn transfer terminology. That's crucial. Learn about articulation agreements. Learn about um, if a school is accredited, that's really important when you're transferring to a four-year institution. If you want to make sure it's accredited, because if you go on for a higher degree, 
you want to make sure the college credits that you take at your previous institution will transfer seamlessly to the next level. You want, as I said earlier, to start early. Be sure to start right away. So I hope to hear from you all this week. Schedule your appointments, and we can start working um, with your transfer plans next week. All right, find the best fit for you, the best for your um, institution that will help you um, succeed and complete your path and fits you. Every student is different, every institution is different, and it's really important you find the right fit so you have the best experience and you can enjoy your education. Be sure to talk to an advisor and your faculty. Um, make sure you become really good friends with those individuals. Make sure they get to know who you are so when you do need to create um, a resume and ask for some reference letters, they'll be able to give you some stellar reference letters to help you. Uh, lots of your programs might not just require the application to get into a four-year institution, but you might also have to apply to that specific program. A great example is um, radiology at the University of Weber. We have our students apply for the University or Weber State University in the fall and then a month later after they've been accepted um, they need to apply for the radiology program. We recommend that they apply for that the first part of January. All right, maintaining a high GPA is essential and knowing what required GPA requirement um, each institution and each program has when you transfer. A lot of our um, four-year institutions require a 2.5 or higher for a GPA in order to um, get into the program or even get into the university. So that's why it's so important to start early and make sure you see those requirements. For instance, some of the programs will require certain GPA just for specific courses. So you want to make sure you're on track. Also, complete the admission process as we visited about just a few minutes ago. Make sure you find out which schools require applications and which programs require applications. So when you go to a four-year institution, you'll have your institution or your application to get into the institution. But then there are also schools within an institution. So there's the School of Business in a lot of cases. And those programs definitely would, in most cases, most cases require an application be completed. Be sure to complete your associate's degree, your two-year degree. That is crucial whether you're going into the workforce or transferring to a four-year institution especially when you're transferring to a four-year institution because it's considered a block transfer. So what that means is that in a lot of cases, they'll take your degree, the four-year institution, and they'll say, okay, you've, you have a two-year degree, so you have met the general education requirements for our institution, and then you can go on and be considered a junior level when you transfer to a four-year institution. It is important to check. Always um, do the research and find out what, what that four-year institution needs. And what happens to a lot of students when they do not complete their um, two-year degree here at Western, then the four-year institution will take their transcript and they evaluate each of the credits on that transcript. And it doesn't always guarantee that credits will transfer. Um, I had an example a situation about a year ago where a student um, had graduated with a degree here. Some of the courses they took here did not transfer to within the program to the transfer institution. So they took maybe a business course here and when they went to transfer, they, the program, the actual department said, no, nope, we're not going to take that, those credits. So the student came to our office and what we did was we went online and we put in an exception request and we said, here is the syllabus. This is what I learned here at Western. Will you accept those credits? And we did that and he, we were able to have quite a few of the credits that um, he took here 
transfer in as junior level credits. So in visiting about junior level credits, we have 1,000 and 2,000 level um, courses here. Those are considered um, your freshman and sophomore year. Your junior year and senior year, those are usually either the 400 level, 300 and 400 level or 4, 3,000 and 4,000 um, level courses. So when you take a course from here, usually it will only transfer as a, the same level to a four-year institution. In the, this case that I just um, visited with you about, those classes that he took here, several of them transferred as junior level classes. So that really saved him a lot of time and a lot of money. So I highly recommend you connect with your advisors, with your faculty, and please come and see me at the ACE Center so I can help and make sure you have a seamless um, transition. And also you will have, save money by doing it. All right. And be sure you attend the orientation they at four-year institutions, whether it's an online orientation for our online students. All institutions um, have orientations, or they have resource, resources to help you get acclimated to their institution. It's very, very important that you look at all the resources and you take advantage of them. Get to know your professors, whether you're on campus at that four-year institution or whether you're taking online classes, make sure that the instructors, the faculty, the admission, the financial aid um, departments, they know who you are because then they'll be able to help you. And you want to um, stand out from other students. A lot of the institutions you'll be transferring to are huge and they're not quite a bit larger than Western Wyoming Community College, so you want to stand out. And you want to hear about all those great opportunities that they have with scholarships, with activities. Um, so your education will be the best it can for you in, and the transfer process. All right. The one tip I want to, or point I want to make with you, to you today is that did you know that community college transfer graduates are value, a valued commodity at a four-year institution? I just went to the National Institute for the Study of Transfer Students in Atlanta this year. Four-year institutions love, love graduates from two-year institutions. They like you because you have spirit, courage, endurance, most of the students, quite a few that transfer to the University of um, Wyoming that have a two-year degree, they, 74% of those students end up graduating with a four-year degree. That is way above um, average um, across the country. Also, transfer students definitely have the determination and the strength of will, and you're not afraid to ask questions. So start asking questions today and please give us a call and we can schedule an appointment to look into transfer for you. Um, we are at the ACET Center and we're in room A212 on the Rock Springs campus and our number is 307-382-1660. Or you can email ACET at westernwyoming.edu to schedule an appointment. We want to let everyone know that on the 28th of um, March, we're having a career and transfer fair. Some of the institutions that will be attending are Shadron State College, Dixie State University, the University of Wyoming, Utah State University, Weber State University. Um, I just spoke to a representative from Weber State University um, who, will be a, who, will, who will be attending. And right now, I'm going to introduce you to Ms. Teresa Schaefe. She is amazing, and she will be talking to you about career and resume building and um, interview, interview skills. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you all very much for coming this evening. We're so glad that you chose to come and spend time with us, honestly. Um, I realize some of you have no choice, but we thank you all the same, all right? Okay, so. 
My component at the ACIT Center is I do a little bit of advising. They let me do that every now and then. Um, and then I'm also the career employment and internships. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that this evening. Kind of give you some ideas of what to do, um, what not to do, things like that. And I'll get started because even though you chose to come spend some time with us, I know you want me to pick up the pace. Right? Okay, so let's talk about resumes, y'all. First of all, your resume is a way of selling yourself when you cannot be there, okay? But although I, later on we're going to talk about you bringing your resume to the career fair. You have to be able to sell yourself with your resume. How do you do that? Well, we're going to get to that in just a second. First of all, the average employer will look at your resume for a grand total of six seconds. That's a fact. That's a fact. So you have to sell them in that very first paragraph. If you don't, they're not going to look any further. The other thing that I want you to know is that many resumes go through a software program that uses keywords. If you do not have those keywords that are in that job description in your resume, the likelihood of it getting kicked out is very great. And I know this to be a fact because it happened to my son. He didn't mention that he had computer experience on his resume and it got kicked out and someone from the plant called him and said, you're still not, are you coming? Are you interested in being employed by us? And he said, well, yes, I put in my application and resume three weeks ago. He said, I don't see it anywhere. He would have lost out, I'm, gonna, I'm not lying about this, he makes two and a half times as much money as I do, and he would have lost out on that position if someone had not caught the fact that he didn't have computer skills on that resume. That software program is very important, so use their words against them. Okay, make sure you do the following. Tailor your resume. So you know everybody, how many of you have been taught to put an objective statement on your resume? Raise your hand. Somebody told you to put an objective statement on your resume. No longer. No longer. That's obsolete. Don't do it. Okay. When you do an objective statement, you are telling somebody what you want. My objective is to start a career entry level position in your company. They don't care about that. Instead, you're going to put a career profile or a qualification summary on that. When you type up your resume, I want you to use business style font. Come on down, son, come on down. You're good, come on down. Use business style font, 12 point. I prefer Times New Roman. It is considered a business style font. However, they also recommend Ariel, Cambria, <coughs> and Verdana. Make sure you put lots of white space. If you've got like run-on sentences and everything, if your resume is all smushed in black, it's not going to be acceptable. You need to have white space so that it brings attention to you. The other thing, avoid those long statements. Instead, use bullets whenever possible. This is what you don't want to do. Now first, before I move on, I'm going to tell you this. Resumes are extremely subjective. So you may come to me and I may tell you to do one thing, you may go to Stacy, she may tell you to do something else, and Peg may tell you to do something else. It's just that different. The things that I'm telling you not to do, however, are very, very accurate. The first thing is that objective statement. Don't use it. Second thing, do not put references on your resume. Don't even say references are available upon request. That white space on that resume is extremely valuable. Even if you only have high school experience, don't put it on there. No photographs. Nobody should care what you look like. Nobody. They should care what skills you are bringing to the table. Avoid colored paper or font. I know you want to draw attention to yourself, but don't do it doing that. Do it with your objective summary, not objective summary, your qualification summary where the objective statement used to be, okay? Don't use the same resume over and over again. Tailor your resume to the job. Remember what I was saying about the software skills? So every single job is probably going to have a different job description. If it says you need to be proficient in Excel, don't say Microsoft Office products. Say Excel. If it says Microsoft Office products, say Microsoft Office products. Every single resume should be tailored to the job that you are seeking. Now, I want you to sell yourself. This isn't the time to be humble before I move on. This is not the time to be humble. You're trying to get the job. However, do not lie. 
or don't exaggerate your skills. That's really important. Make sure you tell the truth. Because even if you get the job, if they find out you were lying, that's cause for termination. And do not speak in the first person. I'm sure that you all have heard this before. There's no I in team. Kind of like that. Don't say I, don't say me. All right. Now, here we are. What goes on your resume? First thing, your heading. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So your name, make your name a little larger and bolded. Okay? But the other thing that I want you to know is if you are putting your resume on a job bank, like Monster or some of these other places, don't put your physical address. When you put stuff out there online, it's kind of like gone forever. We're going to talk about online gone forever here in a minute. Okay? But don't put your address out there. Your phone number, that's one of those things that you want to use your judgment on. But if you want to be called, put your phone number on there. But here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about your voicemail. What does it say? If you're saying something stupid on there, this is not the time. Okay? If you're playing some kind of horrific music in the background, now is not the time. Simply say, you've reached such and such, I'm unavailable. Please leave your name and number, I'll call you back. Okay? Your email address, what is your email address? Do you have something like redhotmama at gmail.com? Because if you do, scrap it for this, okay? Preferably have your name in there some way. And if you have a common name like John Brown or Silly Doe or whatever, make sure you maybe put a number on there. I wouldn't use my birth year, however. Avoid doing that. Okay, so your career qualifications or summary statement in the place where the objective statement used to be should be concise, no more than three or four sentences highlighting the skills that you see they really, really want. Yes, ma'am? So if you're highlighting your skills, I should be going about saying I or me? You will use like past tense, say for example, proven leader having worked as student ambassador. Okay. Something like that. No I to me. Okay, now this is always a good question. People ask me, what should I list first? Experience or my education and my answer is it simply depends we do have internships here at the college if you are a psychology major or a criminal justice major or if you're doing anything out in the technology and industry department there's a very good opportunity that you will have you'll be able to do an internship or a co-op in the field that you are planning to go to work in okay if you have an internship or a co-op then i would put that first underneath experience if you have experience in the field that you are already wanting to get that degree in. So let's say, for example, you are um, an Associate of Applied Science degreed person and you are working currently in law enforcement. Then I would put my law enforcement experience on there and then list that education underneath there. That's just one example. How are you doing, Brian? Yeah? Good. Good. All right. Networking. Let's talk about that because this is like really, really big. I'm just going to go ahead and go through here. First of all, I highly recommend creating a LinkedIn page. It is a form of networking. You can network through your friends. You can network through career fairs, which we're going to talk about in just a second. Your family and Facebook. And before I go on about Facebook, I never thought of Facebook as being a place to network. But it really is. I know. So how many of you have more than 1,000 friends on Facebook? How do you keep up with them? I try to keep mine down. I've got a little over 300, and they're, they're pretty hard to keep up with. But here's what I really, really want you to know about Facebook before we move on. Watch what you post. And if you don't think they're looking at your Facebook when you are looking for a job, you are seriously delusional. Because when you apply for a job, that is one of the very first places they look. They want to see who you are. Because probably one of the most important things to a company isn't the fact that you rocked your psychology classes with a 4.0. They want to know if you're a good fit. And if they got a picture of you burning the flag, you are likely not a good fit. If they have some posts out there that maybe you're using um, questionable language, perhaps the F-bomb profusely, you may not be a good fit. If you are someone that likes to party and you post on there, man, I partied all night last night. I was just too tired to get out of bed and go to class. Chances are you're not a good fit. 
So keep that in mind. By the way, the vast majority of jobs are found through networking. It's not going through the classified. It's not applying online. It really is a lot of times who you know. Okay, here's our career fair. I want to plug that a little bit. And the reason that I want to plug it isn't because I want to have a lot of bodies at it, which is always nice when that happens. But it's because I want you to have some experience. So even if you are a first year experience, I would like or a first year experience student, and this is your first year here at Western, I would like you to come out and see folks. Because what I want you to do is I want you to practice your two minute elevator speech, which truly isn't two minutes. It's gonna be more like 30 seconds. They call it a two minute elevator speech. I have no idea why. But think of yourself as going into an elevator and as you get to the top, you're finished. Practice it a few times, okay? Because we're gonna practice it now. Okay. We have our four year institutions that are coming. Um, you saw some on Peg's uh, display here a little bit ago. These are them that we know for sure are coming. For sure who else is coming is Simplot, Archrock, Basic Energy, Wyoming Machinery. Those are for sure folks that are coming, the United States Army. Goodwill, yes, Goodwill does pay. They're looking for student workers, and it's a great way to do a service to your, uh, in, within your community as well. Okay, now, here's that two-minute elevator speech that we were talking about. Are you ready, victims? So what you're going to do with your little resume in hand, okay, and not everybody's going to take your resume because a lot of people rely on those kiosks, right, or they rely on that Internet way of doing things. So you may not be able to hand off your resume to everybody, but have some handy on crisp paper, okay? You're gonna stroll up and you're gonna say something like this. Hi. Hi, my name's Teresa Shade. How are you doing? Good, I'm a student success advisor at Western. What are you going to do when you grow up? Uh, my name is John. I'm a business You like management, are you a manager now? No? But you want to grow up to be one. Tell me why. Because uh, uh, being able to influence people, and tell them what may happen and what may help uh, to keep it and what I like doing. You went to a four year institution? Uh, I Which one? Have you met my friend Peg? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. You need to stay in contact with her. You're networking now. Got it? Yeah. Mr. Kester, how are you? Good. Yeah? What are you going to grow up to be? Uh, electronic engineer. And where is this going to happen at? Um, getting my degree here at Western. Good. And then from here, you're going to go? Straight on to the workforce. Or you, oh, wait a minute. Two years here, and you're going straight on to the workforce with a what degree? The electronic engineering and instrumentation. Oh, okay. I see. All righty then. So you'll be coming out to the career fair and meeting some folks, right? Good. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Chris Berry. Yeah, Chris? <laughs> I'm, I'm majoring in um, business information systems. And, um, no. You don't know? Okay. Don't know. <laughs> so, so I want you to be confident. Did you all see what I've done to my three victims up here? Right? Yeah? Uh, did what now? Hi. My name is Teresa Shea. I have a master's in higher education. My passion is students. How about you? Uh, Stephanie Rodriguez, I'm a major in special education, and I'm really good at working with kids. And how do you know you're good working with kids? Because I had experience through my high school. I got to work with the special ed kids there. Cool. So you know this is going to be your passion. Yep. All right. So maintain eye contact. Maintain eye contact. Don't be afraid. Nobody is greater than you. Nobody is lesser than you. You stroll up to that like you own it, okay? And then listen to what they've got to say. Prod them into talking because people love to talk. They love to talk. Listen to what they tell you about their company, okay? Then you tell a little bit about your goal, but most importantly, above all else, remember, be you. That goes back to being a good fit for the organization. All righty, that is the conclusion of our presentation. We have some business cards down here. But I want you to know, if you don't already know, that this is what we do at the ACIT Center. We help you create resumes. We will start you out with a good resume, and then you are going to adapt that resume to the job that you are seeking, right? Using their words against them. 
The other thing, we do mock interviews. And when you come into my office to do a mock interview, I expect you to be dressed for success, which goes back to that career fair. Please dress like you would for an interview. Dress for success and be prepared for some real life scenarios. Now, the only thing that I cannot do in that mock interview for you is present you with a really real life situation because the days of being interviewed by an individual are behind you. By and large, when you go into an interview and this unnerves people each and every time, you are likely to face three, four, five, six, or six interviewers in the room. And when you do, it's your job to make sure that every single one of them feels important. Right, Chris? Right. Look every single one of them in the eye. The other thing that I really, really want you to know is we do job posting. So when we get jobs, sometimes employers contact us. We have three job boards here on campus. We have one outside of our office. Actually, we have two on the other side of my boss's window. There's another one hanging there. And then we don't always post everything on there. Then there's another one down here by the pendulum. And there is another one down in the T&I hall. So if it is a job that is tech, for example, William sent me uh, two job postings today and I'm going to get those posted and that will be in the T&I hall because they're electrical and instrumentation, finish your degree first. Okay? They're electrical and instrumentation positions. And then finally, Peg did delve into that four year degree. And folks, if you don't have a history in your family of having a four year degree candidate, someone that has gone through and got their bachelor's degree, a lot of you don't even know where to begin. Please let us help you, most especially let Peg. She's the expert on this and when folks come in looking for transfer stuff, I immediately shuffle them over there because I do not want to mess this up for you, okay? So does anybody have any questions? Would you like to collect some business cards? All righty. Can we turn them loose? Okay.